Okay, y'all, get ready, because today I'm gonna be showing you the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time. At least that's what it claims. Hi, I'm Dan and this is Puzzle File. What you're looking at here is the second in a series of puzzles that were put out by Buffalo Games starting in 1989. I haven't been able to find a whole lot of information about these. From what I can tell, they only made three of them. Each of the three is called the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time, which already throws their claim into doubt. They can't all be the greatest. I bought the second episode on eBay. The first episode seems to be the most common. It's fairly easy to find a copy of the first one. The second and third episode are a little more rare, but they're not particularly valuable. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in this box, so I'm gonna walk you through all of it. The main gimmick, though, is that the pieces are double-sided, and they have this piece-within-a-piece design that I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the box, because I've studied it quite a bit, and I'm still not exactly sure what we're getting into. So here it is, the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time, allegedly, the second episode. It is a two-sided puzzle. This is the image that's on the front side. It has just 512 pieces, and it mentions a piece within a piece design, and it gives us a little look at what that's gonna look like here. So you've got a piece, and then it's got like a little square window that slots into it. There's a lot going on on the back of the box. Up here we have the little story that goes with our puzzle image. Twice upon a time, it was an early spring afternoon atop Mount Foreverest. Basically we have Father Time and his assistant Clepsydra, and she makes a big mess of his music room. Father Time became so enraged that he banished Clepsydra to the underworld. He then set about repairing the damage she had done, retuning instruments and rewriting the old books. This was the second episode of the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time. Down here we have a list of musical instruments used throughout history that appear in the puzzle image and a little guide to find them. And then down here is a look at the back of the puzzle. So the reverse side is all of these clock faces. And this is really the kind of mysterious part. It says there are two sides to every story and every great puzzle. This is the time consuming side. And it says there's a pattern to the order in which the little clock hands are inserted into the hundreds of faces. Unfortunately, you can't discover the patterns until the puzzle is assembled, and you can't assemble the puzzle until the pattern is known. Does this sound mildly difficult? We know you'll solve it. If you can't, you'd never have started this puzzle. And down here, the old Buffalo Games logo, copyright 1991. All right, let's take a look at these interesting pieces. So as you can see, all of the pieces have this little window design, and each one has a little square that can slot into them, but they're all interchangeable. And not only are the squares interchangeable, but any of the pieces can fit with any other. So piece shape is not gonna help us with this puzzle. And now I'm wondering, it says there are 512 pieces. I don't know if that includes the squares. Like, does this count as one piece or two pieces? So I am gonna attempt to do both sides of this puzzle. I'm not feeling super excited about solving the mystery of these clocks right now. So I'm gonna start with the front side, which is a lot more straightforward. It looks like a good puzzle image. There's a lot going on, a lot of colors. I don't think it'll be too hard, even with the piece within a piece gimmick. To get started, I'm just gonna sort out the edge pieces, separate the frame pieces from the square pieces, and then start building. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Something I think puzzle people have in common is that we love relaxation activities that offer mental stimulation. We like to keep our brains engaged. 
And this is why I love Brilliant.org. Their interactive lessons in math and computer science topics provide that mix of fun and learning that we crave. Brilliant has thousands of lessons to choose from, no matter what level you're at. If you're a student or a professional or just a lifelong learner like me, you can try courses in math, AI, data science, so many different topics, and they're always adding new lessons. I've been really enjoying their course in scientific thinking, which gets you to think in a different way by giving you little science puzzles to solve. So if you want to try it out, you can get access to everything Brilliant has to offer totally free for a full 30 days if you go to brilliant.org slash puzzle file or click on the link in my description. And bonus, the first 200 of you to use that link can get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. That didn't take too long. So we've got our three piles, the edge pieces, the regular pieces, and the little squares. I'm gonna start by assembling the frame, and then I think I'm gonna try to get all of the window pieces put together before I start putting squares into them. We'll see, I might change my mind, but that's what I'm planning right now. Okay, this side of the puzzle is gonna be done in no time. Now I can tell you now, this is a 16 by 16 square, which means that there are 256 window pieces and 256 squares. The identical cut pieces did trip me up a little bit building the frame. I did put some things together the wrong way and had to fix them but there's so few pieces that it really didn't give me too much of a problem. I think this is gonna be wrapped up in no time. Okay, this was really fun. It took about two and a half hours. It's a fun puzzle image. Getting all the little frame pieces together felt pretty easy. The little squares were harder than I expected. Because by the time I got to the little squares, I was really familiar with the image. I thought, this is gonna be real easy. I know where everything goes now. And I did, kinda. But because you have literally no piece shape information on those squares, every single one is just a perfect little square that can go in any location, in any orientation. It's a lot. 
A lot of them were easy to plunk in, but some of them had so little picture information on them, or you'd have a bunch that were really similar. Now in the end, I had like five or six solid black pieces that I just put in at random because there's no way to know exactly where they're supposed to go. There were also like five or six teal pieces that all looked the same. So it would have been nice if they had been a little more thoughtful about making sure there was some little bit of image on each piece so that there is an actual right answer for each piece. But maybe the idea is that I'm supposed to use both sides of the puzzle to figure that out. I don't want to look at the other side because I don't want to be spoiled before I try to do those clock faces on my own. So all in all, this was a fun little puzzle. Is it shaping up to be the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time? It doesn't feel like it, but I'm only halfway through, so... I'll give you my final assessment at the end. Okay, let's take this apart and start it over. Okay, I think this is gonna be a really similar process with just a much more difficult image. I'll do the same sorting, edge pieces, big pieces, little squares, and then I'm gonna work my way through them in that order too. Edges, big pieces, and then figure out how those little squares go in with the clock hands. Let's do it. Okay, the frame is done, and I very quickly figured out that this is not a random arrangement of 256 clock faces. It's actually a repeating pattern. So it looks like we've got a four by four block of clocks that's going to repeat 16 times across this. So that helps us out quite a bit because I can take a piece like this, it matches this one, so I know it's either gonna go four up from there, or four up from there, or four over from there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is some more sorting, sort out all of these pieces by which clock design they are, and then I can start plugging them in. Although the pattern repeats, it is slightly off from the piece cut, so that you do have to look for the position that is a perfect match. So there is a, a right and wrong for these. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost two hours into this puzzle now. And here's what I'm thinking. I think that this is a bad, broken puzzle. I have serious doubts that it is even possible to complete it. I'm not having any fun trying to. So let me show you what's going on. So I've been going stack by stack, which I think was a good way to approach this. So I pull out a stack. All the pieces look like this. They're all almost identical, but the cut is just slightly different on each one. So each one of these can get tried in our 16 different possible positions. And we're trying to see, do we think this lines up perfectly? That one is okay, but not perfect. That's definitely not perfect. That's better. So basically I have to try these until I find one that I think looks like it's a perfect match. Then I repeat that with all the pieces in the stack. What keeps happening to me is I get down to the last three or four pieces and none of them seem to go anywhere, which means I've got pieces in the wrong place. So I have to go back, pull out ones that I had already placed, figure out which ones are just a slightly less than perfect fit with where they are. Keep retrying them until I get something that looks like it works for all 16 pieces. The thing is, if one of them is off, 
then anything that I connect to that piece is also going to be off. So the problem just compounds across the whole thing. And everything is going to look slightly off because the die that cuts this has thickness to it. So it's going to remove just a tiny, teeny bit of the image in each position. So nothing is going to be exactly perfect. And so then you have to wonder, is this not perfect because this is the wrong piece? Or is this not perfect because of how it was cut? Some of the pieces are bent or worn a little bit at the edges. Okay, so I could keep working at that forever, for hours and hours and hours, trying to figure out exactly the right position, the best fit position that I can come up with for each of these pieces. But I really don't understand how I'm supposed to do the hands. The hands have no information to tell me if I've got one in the right position. There's no positive feedback, because they're all exactly the same square shape. So I can try all 256 of these in one spot, and I'll never know which one is right, so I think the only way to know if you're putting hands in the right position is to be flipping back and forth, looking at the other side of the puzzle, which is silly to me. Like, what is the point? Especially when you factor in that we couldn't even get a completely accurate completion on the other side of the puzzle because there were so many identical square pieces at the end. So that's why I'm saying I think this is a bad, broken puzzle. I don't think it's solvable. And it's not fun to even try. I'm having major flashbacks to when I was doing the Mystic series puzzles. And we had one of them that was nearly unsolvable because the pieces all had identical shapes. That was also a double-sided puzzle by Buffalo Games from the early 90s. Y'all, what were you doing back then? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a lot of the puzzle built. I'm just gonna lay the rest of the pieces into it at random. We'll flip it over and see what kind of masterpiece we've created. Is this the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time? So you might be disappointed that we're not gonna get to solve the pattern of the clock hands, but I've got you covered. I was afraid something like this might happen, so when I solved it the first time, I did flip it over and took a quick picture. So we can look at that picture now and see what the answer was. Now remember, this solution wasn't 100% correct because there were some pieces that I had to put in randomly, but most of the clock hands should be in the right position. So here we go. Okay. Okay, so it looks like all of the white hands are in the center of the puzzle and the black hands are around the periphery. In the top left, we've got a clock at 12 o'clock and the next one is at 12.05. And I wonder if that's what we're looking for. That one might be wrong. Cause then that's 12.15, 12.20. Maybe that one's wrong. I don't know, that could be what we're looking for. Although down on the next row, it's like all nine o'clock. It's hard to tell at a glance because the clocks are not all pointing the same direction. All right, I don't know, even with it 90% solved in front of me, I can't tell what the solution is. So, so I'm just gonna say we dodged a bullet with that. Okay, final thoughts. The front side was fun, although not without problems, but I enjoyed it. The image is fun as a puzzle. I just wish they had designed it a little more carefully so that you didn't have so many ambiguous pieces. The piece within a piece gimmick was fun. It was interesting. It really added a different dynamic to the puzzle, more so than I was expecting. I would totally be interested in somebody reviving that concept. Is this the greatest jigsaw puzzle of all time? It's not even good. The backside is a disaster, unsolvable. I don't know, have any of you ever done one of the puzzles in this series? Let me know if you were able to solve it, if there was some other strategy that you used that I didn't think of. But there's nothing greatest about this puzzle. I can't think of 
anything that it does particularly well. Not the image or the quality or the piece cut or the puzzling experience. Greatest typeface, maybe. It is a really good box, I will give them that. Buffalo Games in the early 90s seemed to be really enamored with this interchanging pieces concept. They did a few series of puzzles like this. There's the talking puzzles, the lost in a jigsaw puzzles, this series. The puzzle that I did from the Mystic series that was like this was probably kind of a production mistake. Here's what I think happened there. Cardboard puzzles are cut with a die, which is like a big cookie cutter that punches through them. The die gets worn out over time and has to be resharpened. And so when that happens, they'll take that die to be sharpened and they'll swap in another one. So this is why if you and I buy the same puzzle, they may not have the exact same piece cut because puzzle manufacturers have to keep switching the die in and out. So I think that puzzle I got from the Mystic series was that they had just swapped in a die that made no sense for that puzzle. But this whole idea of doing puzzles where all the pieces are interchangeable or produce a tessellation pattern has been done much more successfully by other brands. For example, Woodbests, Bewilderness, the Cloud9 series from Bits and Pieces, to name a few recent examples. And even before Buffalo Games was doing it, starting in the 80s, there was a line of puzzles called Schmuzzles that were famous for this. So try these puzzles at your own risk, or check out some of the other ones I just talked about. I might need to do a whole video on tessellation puzzles. If you like watching a grown man put together jigsaw puzzles, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna get back to puzzling, and I'll catch you all next time.